So you might think all you need to do in your elevator pitch is present a problem and solution, right? Not if you want to win. My colleagues here at the University of Dayton School of Business can help. After you lead with the problem and introduce your solution, you need to frame the potential of your idea, showing how it will succeed in the marketplace and make a good return for investors. You can also show how your idea is better than the competition. It helps a lot if you have solid market data, some research to back you up. Don't use lame phrases like, we believe or we feel. Show me the numbers. Let's look at some examples of past winners pitching the viability of their ideas. Our design has undergone small-scale wind tunnel testing. We're seeking $200,000 for 40% equity. To generate revenue, Full Circle plans to license the design to trailer manufacturers. There are 114 million households at risk in the U.S. 46% have at least one smartphone that can access our system. It can also be adapted for worldwide markets. Capturing 0.5% of our target market results in 16 k of profit in year one. We are cash flow positive, and with a 50 k investment, we can expand. Investors can expect a 75% ROI within two years. Did you notice how the research and stats lend credibility to the presenters? It at least seems they know what they're talking about. Exactly. It gives the judges something solid to chew on and confidence that your proposal is a lot more than just another vague idea. It also invites follow-up from potential investors. So after you lead with the problem and introduce the solution, you should frame the potential of your idea in a way that ignites their imagination. Just one more step left to making your elevator pitch perfect. Click here to find out more. You gonna click or what?